Can you tell me exactly what happened, Major? We do not know for sure. We only know that your husband was driving very fast, too fast, and that for some reason he, he lost control of the vehicle. A tragic accident. It is all in your mind. Don is dead. Mrs. Tierney's problem was a relatively simple one. She was deeply in love with her husband, and when he was killed in that accident, she just couldn't let go of him. It's not that unusual. Suddenly adjusting to the death of someone that close to is never easy. If you're as emotionally vulnerable and as sensitive as Mrs. Tierney is, it's even more difficult. And subconsciously, anyway, she refused to accept it. And so she imagined that he was still around. More than that, she brought him back to her whenever she could. <laughs> what do you mean, ghosts? Most of my patients are haunted by phantoms of one kind or another, Mr. Brennan. And if we know anything for certain about the human mind, it's that it's capable of some very strange things. Given the need and the will, the warning. And under the right circumstances, it can do just about anything including conjuring up the dead. The mind creates its own reality. Yes, I see. And now you're reassured. Good. But that's only one possible explanation of the uh, so-called supernatural. And as the one which is a rationalist and a doctor working in this field, I'm uh, happy to subscribe to it. Yes, of course. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the explanation, does it? No, but it's one I'll settle for. Unfortunately, so has Mrs. Tierney over the past five weeks. You know, it's strange, Doctor. It got so that she was seeing him everywhere she went, you know? Even in the house with her. Yes, she told me. But she's a highly intelligent woman, and no matter how much part of her wanted that and brought it about, when she thought it through, her reason told her it wasn't possible. Hence her breakdown. And now? Oh, she's fine. As far as it's possible to tell. Can't you be more definite? Wouldn't that be nice? However, I'm satisfied that, as of now, she has everything sufficient in perspective for me to discharge her, but that's not saying. What do you mean? It, it could happen again? It could. It's not likely, but it's possible. When should it done? Thank you. It depends entirely on how she continues to adjust to his death. They were obviously very close, the pair of them. Very. They even had some kind of ESP or whatever you'd call it going for them from time to time. So I understand. Not so much Don, I don't think, but Annie. She said there were times when she could tell exactly what he was thinking. Even though they were miles apart. And why not? Two minds, finely tuned, both on the same wavelengths. One transmitting, the other receiving. I often wonder why some of my colleagues find that so difficult to accept. It's a pity they never had any children. Anne can't have kids. 
She told my wife. Yes, that's clear from her medical records. And that was a blow which I don't think Mrs. Tierney has ever fully recovered from. Apart from anything else, children are a very useful channel for all kinds of emotions, especially at a time like this. Still, something else, perhaps. Her work, maybe? You think they would help? It could. Depends how important it is to her. Fairly, I think. She's good at it. Then, encourage her. See that she keeps busy, particularly over the next few months. The important thing is... Come in. Ah, Mrs. Tierney. All packed, ready to go. Hello, Harry. Hello. Traveling out all this way, you shouldn't have bothered. I could have called a local taxi. No way. How are you? Fine. Not sorry to be leaving, though. I am delighted to hear it. Where's your case? In the hall. Come on in. Let's not hang around. Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Fillimore. Goodbye. Goodbye. Lovely old place, isn't it? From the outside. Well, come and eat with us tonight, at least, eh? Um, uh, not tonight, thanks, Harry. Uh, I'll be all right. It's just that I'd like to be on my own tonight. Well, if that's how you feel. Tomorrow, though. I'd like that. <laughs> Tomorrow night, then. Now, that's a, a promise? Promise. I think you'll find the place is in pretty good nick. Mrs. Butler's been in regularly and Liz has popped over from time to time. I can see that. I've never seen the place so clean and tidy. You'll probably have to get some food in, though. Oh, well, I'll nip out to the shops later. Made any plans, have you? No, not really. Not beyond finishing off that hamster trust job, anyway. I've only got four or five more pictures left to take. But you hadn't thought any further than that? Um, no. You want to carry on working? I know you don't have to, thank God, but, well, you want to carry on with your own photography, won't you? Oh, yes. Just to keep myself occupied. So why not join the agency? Hmm? Associate member? It's what Don wanted, wasn't it? And the only thing holding you back before was because yes. you... Yes. That I didn't want to be in competition with him. Well, not directly, anyway. Because you know how talented you are. And so did he. Believe me. Anyway, it's a, it's a different scene now, isn't it? So... Why not give me the nod and we'll put your name up before the next management meeting, eh? When's that? Two weeks' time. What do you say? OK, Harry. Why not? Great. So, consider yourself associate member as of now. What if the other members of the board turn me down? What do you mean, turn you down? They'll be knocked out by the idea. Well, I think I'll wait till the votes are counted first. Anyway, I've got to be going. I'm playing golf with one of the senior editors of Life this afternoon and... Liz will be wondering where we've got to. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to ring her? No, 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 no. I've got to go by the house to pick up my club, so I'll tell her what's happening then. Look, I hope she won't be too upset. She's just delighted that you're back home again. Well, back to now. Normal? <laughs> Full health. And besides, you're right. This is where you belong. Did you know that we were thinking of selling this place and buying somewhere in the country? Oh. Mm. We talked about it the night before Don left for Rhodes. It's what we both wanted. And is it still a possibility? Oh, no. Not be on my own. Wouldn't be the same, would it? You know, Don was trying to tell me something. I'm sure of that. But he couldn't. Now that he's gone, I'll never know what it was, will I? Come on, Harry. I'll see you out. Give my love to Liz, won't yes, you? Yes, yes, I will.
And what about those who will be with us for the first time at our next gathering? Have all the necessary arrangements been made for them? They are in hand, Maitre. Everything is being attended to. And as to security, I, I... leave that entirely in your hands, as always. With the utmost confidence. Thank you. But you may rest assured that... Oh, believe I... me, Colonel. I do. Kalimera, Pata. Kalimera, Kiri Lavalier. Iste Kala. Poli Kala, Efharisto. Esis Posiste. Stelete Kamia Vuithia. Oh, Poli Evgenico Ekmeruses. Then in a tipota, plus si hamena lastiho. Tora omos borumena sinichisume. And axilipon, tot in a figo. O feos masis. Efharisto, yet in a fisu. Poli Kalos Anthropos, O Kiri Lavalier. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Mm. How are things? You're looking fabulous. Thanks. Feeling good? Mm. Better and better. Knockout. No more... Um... No. No more ghosts. And have you finished taking those photographs for the Hampstead Trust? Yes. Dropped in the last batch yesterday. <laughs> oh, you've uh, kept the negatives, I hope. Of course. Oh, go. Oh, talking of photographs, what do you make of these? I meant to bring them round the other night, but, well, I just forgot. Oh. You take these? No. Don must have done. Oh. Where? Well, on roads, I assume. That man Bascom gave them to me. Bascom? Yes, you know that fellow I told you about. The one who came to the house when we were packing up Don's things. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, according to him, Don had these done locally. But why? Do you recognise any of these men? Hmm, one or two of them. That's Sir Joseph Marcus, the big white chief of ACI. Oh, yes. Well, pretty insignificant looking, isn't he? <laughs> well, I reckon if you're chairman of the second largest company in the world, it's a, an advantage to look insignificant these days. But, well, he doesn't look insignificant, does he? There's Remo Manzini, another bloody millionaire. He's also a member of the Italian government. A lot of pundits are predicting that he is going to be the next prime minister of Italy, no less. Well, what was he doing on roads? Good question. And with Sir Joseph Marcus. Doesn't fit. Who's that? <laughs> Some kraut flunky or other by the look of him. Hmm? Can't you just see him in a nice pair of shiny jack boots? Mm. Well, well. Mr. Money himself. Emmerich Niederman. What's he do? Obviously, you don't read the Financial Times, my girl. No, pink's never been my favourite colour. Well, he is Needham's Bank, the largest private bank in Switzerland, and for an encore, he does a very good impersonation of one of the governors of the World Bank. Ooh, he is bloody high-powered, my love. Oh, yeah. Can't recognise any of the others off the cuff, I'm afraid. Do you know, Annie, there's, there's no way Don could have taken these on roads. When a group like this get together for a chinwag, well, the whole world knows about it. I tell you what, he probably took these when he did that international business conference in San Francisco last year. No, oh, I have them printed up in Rhodes. Well, he probably mislaid this roll, and when he got to Rhodes, found it in his camera bag, wondered what the hell was on it, popped it into this, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Seferis, got him to develop it and do some enlargements for him. Simple as that. Mystery solved. Mm, I'm not so sure. Oh, there's no other explanation, is there? No. You're probably right. Annie Love. Hmm? About Rhodes. What, what are your feelings? Well, I didn't really see much of the place. Why do you ask? Well, what would you say to going back there and finishing off what Don was doing? I couldn't. Why not? Well, I'm just not good enough. Oh, come on, now, that's crap, and you know it. All right, so you're not Don Tierney, but then no one's asking for facsimiles. It would be your viewpoint, your own style. It would be your book. And, well, in a way, a sort of memorial, wouldn't it? Hmm. Could be, I suppose. Best kind, my love. Well, if I did it, I would want to include all those pictures that Don took. 
And his name would have to be on the book as well. It wouldn't just be mine. It would be ours. Costa said on the phone that his man Nikolai this will be there to meet you. Mm -hmm. Remember, the house is still available if you want to use it. Well, I'm not sure that's a very good idea. Well, there's plenty of hotels if not. See how you feel. If you send your films to the lab by air freight, they'll print up your proofs from your transparencies and get them back to you the same way. Just so you know how you're going. Now, have you got everything? Harry, stop fussing. Yeah, all right. Well. Give me a call when you get settled. Right? Right. Right. Thanks for coming to see me off, Harry. Yeah. My pleasure. Garden. What a delightful house this is. Your husband liked it too, I think. Yes, he did. Very much. He told me about it on the telephone. I was so looking forward to seeing it, but then when I did, I'm afraid it just didn't register. Of course not. I understand. So, you will be staying here, yes? Yes, please. Then, Mr. Vellanos has instructed me to tell you that the house is at your disposal for as long as you require. Oh, that's very kind of him. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Vallanos and Mr. Harry... Brennan. Oh, yes, Mr. Harry Brennan. They are good friends. Oh, obviously. In Greece, friendship is a debt. And calling on that debt does not weaken the friendship. It strengthens it. So by staying here, you are doing both a favor, Mr. Stephen. <laughs> what a nice thought. So now, I will go and speak to the woman who is paid to clean the house. There is dust, and there should not be. Oh, please, don't. Tomorrow, go. she will come again. Oh, I'm quite uh, happy. Please, it is her job, and she must do it properly. Uh, may I help you with your luggage? No, that's all right. I can manage. Paracano. Thank you. Kiria uh, Tirni. Mrs. Tirni, I regret that your husband and I did not start off well together. I think he found me too correct, and perhaps even a bit of a jerk. Oh. He was not alone in this opinion, and it is my fault, I fear. Sadly, such is my nature that I do not always reach people as I would wish. And for me, in a foreign language, it is even more difficult. But I want you to know that his death was a great shock to me, and that I felt no small sadness because of it. Thank you, Mr. Nicolaides. Oh. We've made a better start, I think. Oh, yes, we have. And I am glad. I regret I cannot help you, Mrs. Tierney. No, I am sorry. But when I developed them, I most possibly thought they were taken here on roads. But Don did not say. And there is nothing in them to make me sure. It is important to you to know? No, not important. I just couldn't place them, and they ought to be filed, really. Well, thank you, Mr. Seferis. Oh, anything, any time. Uh, Don was my friend, you know. Yes, so I see. Oh, a simple monument. You do not object, I hope? No, of course not. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, please, uh, read what he wrote in his book for me. To my good friend, Andreas. Oh, th that's me. Andreas, that is my name. Yes, I rather gathered that. The best photographer on roads. Oh, I, I told him, Don, that is too much, I said. <laughs> but uh, he insisted. Well, he obviously thought very highly of you. <sighs> Such a tragedy. And what they lost to photography. And of course, 
to you an even greater loss. Yes. Well, thank you again, Mr. Seferis. Uh, you arrived here yesterday, you say? Yesterday evening. And you'll be staying for some time? A month, maybe longer. Well, as Don was my friend, so I hope you will be the same with us. I am at your service at any time. But on Sundays, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock only. It's these trees. Ne, after in the end, actually, Dimitri. Ne? 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 Apolitos Bevios. Taime aqui. Yasas, Kiri. Excuse me. Mrs. Tierney, isn't it? David Bascom, remember? Yes. I apologize for disturbing you, Metro. But I have just received the lists of names of those people who arrived yesterday by air and sea. And there's one name which I felt I should bring to your attention immediately. Mrs. Anne Tierney. His wife. You think so? I've been expecting her arrival. But why is she here? I'm not certain why. That we must find out. And your husband asked me if I give him a hand. I can see why. Speaking Greek, knowing the island. Where are you going to? Well, we haven't really talked about it in any detail. Probably would have done, though, just for the fun of it. We made a welcome break from Byzantine Road. Yeah. yeah. When's your book going to be published? Oh, not for ages yet. Um, not until autumn of next year at the earliest. Following spring, more likely. Sounds fascinating. <laughs> if you're into that period of history, maybe. How's it going? Mm. I haven't started on the writing part yet. Still got quite a bit of research to do. And that takes up most of your time, I suppose. Oh, keeps me pretty occupied. So there's no chance of you being able to do the same for me as you were going to do for Don? <sighs> I'm glad you asked. I was... I was trying to get up enough nerve to suggest it myself. Oh, I'd be awfully grateful. Just for the first couple of weeks, just till I get my bearings. If you're sure, it won't interfere with your work too much. And whatever you and Don have decided about... He my... was going to pay for dinner. Well, I think I could top that. I'd rather you didn't. Well, we'll work something out. So, when can we make a start, Mr. Bascom? Mr. Bascom? David, please. Of course. And you're... Anne. With or without an E? With. Right then, Anne with an E. How about tomorrow morning around 8? So soon. Is it too soon for you? No, the sooner the better, but haven't you got something planned for tomorrow? Nothing, I can't switch to some other time. Oh, great. Tomorrow then. And this afternoon I'll fix myself up with some transport. Oh, no need. We can use my car. It's a bit of a wreck, but it goes. Well, thanks all the same, but I'll be needing a car of my own. But even so, I wouldn't hire till you have to. Here in town's ahead of us, that cheaper to go by taxi. And uh, in the old city where you're living, it's much easier to walk everywhere. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. So save yourself the hassle and a fair bit of money as well. Only hire when you have to. In the meantime... All right, all right. You've convinced me we'll use yours. But I pay for the petrol. At Greek prices... <laughs> I'm not that proud. <laughs> Something the matter? What is it? Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. I, I just thought for a minute. Are you really okay? Yes. Sorry. Where were we? Post trauma reaction, that's all. At least according to Dr. Fillimore. Who's Dr. Fillimore? I had a breakdown shortly after Don was killed. I was out of my mind for a while, or so he said. Were you? I'm not sure.
Well, why not leave them in there? We're safe humping up to the house and back again in the morning. Oh. Oh, the car's locked up in the garage overnight. Are you sure? Pick you up at eight again, then. Seven o'clock would be fine with me. Why not? Good idea. Seven it is, then. Thank you for today. I think I've made a good start. Well, thank you for having me along. I, uh, I enjoyed it. Night, Anne. Night. White. Uh, black, please. I thought we might drive out to Plutania this morning and then maybe go on down to Lindos. Okay. What about that place that old Potter you told me about, Liz? That's on the way. Thanks. Good. Does the name Raoul La Valliere? I should say so. Why? Aha! So you've been invited to the presents too, have you? Mine arrived this morning, much to my surprise. So, what have we done to be so honoured, I wonder? As far as I know, no one on the island's ever been inside King Raoul's castle. Well, certainly not since he took the place over, anyway. And that includes local dignitaries. So, as you said, why us? And who else? God knows. Well, maybe this soiree is some kind of open day for all us pros. Very much doubt it, though. That will be a bit out of character for La Vallière, by all accounts. Well, we shall just have to wait and see, won't we? Are you going, then? I wouldn't miss it for the world. I mean, quite apart from natural curiosity, the Castello has to be one of the finest examples of Crusader fortress anywhere outside the Middle East. Who is this man? What's he doing on roads? Yeah, it's a funny thing. Don asked me those same questions. He was very interested in Monsieur de Vallière. Really? Oh, it's hardly surprising. He's one of our local characters and very intriguing. So, 
Tell me about him, then. And where's this castle of his? Good evening, Mrs. Tierney. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Follow me, please. Just wait here for a moment, please. Well, what about all this then? It's incredible. It must be almost exactly the way it was originally. Huh? Who's he? No idea. My kinsman, Tybalt de Montfort. I am Raoul de Valier. Good evening, Mrs. Tim. Good evening. Mr. Bascom. Monsieur de Valier. Le Comte de Montrefort was once master of this castle. Did you know that? Really? No, I didn't. I am so glad you were able to come, both for the pleasure of your company and for the opportunity it provides me of personally expressing my sincere condolences on the tragic death of your husband. That's very kind of you. And with your special interest, Mr. Bascom, I thought it was high time you visited the Castello. You will find it interesting, I think. Oh, it's fascinating. It's magnificently restored. Thank you. Did you meet my husband while he was here on roads? Oh, sadly, no. I had hoped that we might here over dinner one night, perhaps, but unfortunately that was not to be. I've always been such a great admirer of his work, particularly his war coverage. He captured such telling and poignant moments with his photographs, each one an indictment of our stupidity, and many clearly taken at considerable risk to himself. He was a very brave man, I think. Yes, he was. So now, with my thanks for this private moment together, let us put away the past, huh? Shall we join the others? Tell me, Monsieur Le Valier. How did you know You I are would... far too beautiful to go unnoticed, Mrs. Tierney. And Rhodes is not a big island. So, word reached me. I think you will find the Chablis very much to your taste, Mrs. Tierney. 76 was a very fine vintage. Thank you. Please excuse me. Say anything about dressing up on the invitation, did it? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. No point. This is the only suit I got to my name. Well, shall we mingle? Five years only. Until then, my home was in Lebanon, near Sidon. In another castle? Certainly. A castle even older than this one. But, regrettably, the situation in the Middle East forced me to move from there. And you prefer Rhodes to France? I do, yes. I've not lived in France for many years. And you? Do you like this island? 
yes. More and more as I travel around it, it has an atmosphere all of its own. Which must be difficult to convey with a camera. Yes, it is. But it's what Don wanted to do. And now, you have taken over that task from him. Oh, no, not really. I'm just standing in. I couldn't possibly match what Don would have done. But it seems a pity to let the job go unfinished. I agree. Forgive me, Mentra, for not joining you earlier. But there were some matters I had to attend to. Of course. Mrs. Tierney, allow me to introduce Dietrich von Reitz. Herr von Reitz is a business associate of mine. How do you do? I'm seriously considering giving Mrs. Tierney the view from here. <laughs> Do you live in this lovely castle too, Herr von Reitz? Yes, I have that privilege. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Bascom's looking for me, and he's got some food. You must excuse me, gentlemen. Of course. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. There are photographs and negatives. But she is not to be harmed. That is unnecessary. The resemblance is uncanny. Oh, well, it's not all that surprising. Le Valier said, didn't he, that de Montrefort was an ancestor of his? In a direct line, maybe, in which case... Oh, even so. Now, what interested me more was that de Montrefort was clearly a Knight Templar. Well, why is that so interesting? Because all the knights on roads were hospitallers. What's that? Members of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. You know, St. John's Ambulance and all that. Football matches and open-air pop concerts, God help them. Oh. Only in those days, they were the lot who, when the other crusaders had got through belting hell out of the infidel, patched up the wounded, on both sides often. And when the Saracens finally kicked all the knights out of the Holy Land, the hospitalers grabbed this place. They're very jealous of their rights here, and they protected them. And there may have been a few Templars around from time to time. As far as I know, there's no record of one of them holding a castle on the island. And yet, funny thing, I, I've seen the name de Montrefort somewhere fairly recently. Oh, probably during your research somewhere. No, it must have been. More? No, I'm all right, thanks. I'm damned if I can remember where. Oh, it wouldn't have had any relevance for me. I'm dealing with the history of roads up until the hospitalers moved in on the place in 1309. And de Montrefort wouldn't have come onto the scene till after that, and then not for long. In 1312, the Templars were all excommunicated. Those who hadn't already been burnt at the stake, that is. Oh, delightful. Oh, uh -huh. that's the way political problems were handled in those days. Things haven't changed all that much, have they? <laughs> we'll have a spot more brandy. Mm. So... Uh, what do you think of Fran Lavalier, then? Oh, he's, um... Charming. Yeah, he's a bit too smooth to my mind. What about the rest of them? Well, you are right. Not a local in sight, as far as I could see. Not say. one. They weren't exactly a chatty lot. Who were they? Some of his rich cronies, I suppose. Mm. From what I've heard, there's always at least a dozen of them up there in residence. All looked after by this nice, clean-cut young man, eh? <laughs> yeah, there were quite a few of those around, were there? Mm. Do you think maybe he's a bit, uh... No, I don't. In fact, I'm sure he's not. Based on what? Oh, just the way he looked at me. Do you think he has many visitors up there? Dozens, apparently. From what I've heard in the village, anyway. Mm. Well, a man like that with all that money, he'd know a lot of people. I mean, politicians and bankers, people like that, wouldn't he? Sure. Raoul Lavalier probably knows God. See you at twelve thirty then. Yes. Good night. Night then.
Yes. I now have a complete dossier on Mrs. Tierney Metro. I will leave it here for you. It would seem that recently she had some kind of mental breakdown. I know. Please. Thanks. Do you have any idea when that packet will get to London? Oh, who can say? God willing. Sometime today. Thanks. That's close enough. <laughs>